Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, February the 5th, 2019. Today is the birthday of plastic. In 1909, a Belgian chemist named Leo Bakeland announced a new composite he called Bakelite, or if you prefer, polyoxybenzyl methyl anglycolin hydride. This was the first time that a fully synthetic plastic was created. And while plastics have a bad reputation and have undoubtedly been overused in our world, modernity depends more than we realize on plastic. Depending on its composition, plastics can have properties that no organic material can. And so medicine, science, electricity, transportation, construction, and a hundred other fields simply cannot exist without plastic. It's imperfect, but it's essential to life in the 21st century and was first created today. Today is also the birthday of a great Jesuit scientist, Caspar Schott, born in 1608 in Germany. He was a chronicler of science, although he did some important work of his own. And Scott is particularly important for his mechanical drawings that allowed people all over Europe to build universal joints and gear works. In fact, there are quite a few monks, some known, some unknown, whose sketches and drawings made certain kinds of engineering possible. And whereas it would have taken 20 or 30 years to get a professor to some small town here or there, these people were able to provide an image and people were able to work from that image to create the technology themselves. In 1939, February the 5th, Francisco Franco becomes the 68th Cadilla de España, the chief executive and military ruler of Spain. Franco seemed like a good guy when he stepped on the stage in 1939. But his rule devolved more and more into a fascist dictatorship in which the individuality of the fiercely independent regions of northern Spain were crushed and homogenized. Franco also co-opted the church and made sure that all the bishops of Spain were always on his side, either through bribes or through fear. Franco died in 75 and he was buried with honor outside of Madrid. But in the past 20 years, his memory has soured, and he is generally despised by most of the populace and certainly all of the young as a terrible, terrible man. So much so that when Father Chris and I were in Spain, his body was removed from the National Monument and reburied elsewhere. Franco's use of the church has been deadly for the faith in Spain, and many of the regions who are experiencing a rebirth of their local language and culture are consciously excluding the church from that renaissance because they see the church as a tool of Franco. Finally, today is the birthday of Adlai Stevenson. He was a Democrat and a close advisor to John F. Kennedy, although there were rumors that Kennedy didn't like Stevenson and considered him too weak to do what needed to be done. And so JFK had pushed Stevenson off to a largely unimportant post of ambassador to the UN. When U-2 spy planes discovered Russian rockets in Cuba in 1962, Stevenson was put to the test in a series of face-offs with Soviet ambassador to the UN Valerian Sorin. It was Thursday, October the 25th, day 10 of the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the doomsday clock was at about two minutes to midnight. Churches around the country were offering 24-hour confessions with lines around the block. Few believed that we could avoid nuclear war. JFK launched a three-part plan that included a blockade of Cuba, a secret agreement to remove U.S. missiles from Turkey, and a campaign of public embarrassment of the Soviets in the U.N. And on that Thursday, Stevenson listened to other nations say their piece, and then he stared Zorin down, and he asked him blankly, Mr. Ambassador, are you saying that the USSR has not placed nuclear missiles in Cuba. You said that yesterday, are you still saying it today? And then he said one of the most famous lines in UN history. Stevenson looked at the Russian and said, don't wait for the translation, answer me now. A tense laughter broke out and Zorin said that there were not missiles there. And Stevenson then dramatically called forth three aides with large spy images of Cuba on easels and the USSR was thoroughly embarrassed. It was a master stroke of politics and it robbed the USSR of any moral high ground. Four days later, the secret deal was cut, the blockade was enforced, and the nuclear missiles were removed from Cuba. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.